First up, Fidelity Digital Assets validates model, and this is from Plan B that predicts Bitcoin price at 1 million. I gotta tell you, I'm so sick of hearing that Bitcoin's going to a million, Bitcoin's going to a million. I remember John McAfee said that. God, what a disappointment that guy is. Um, not for what he's done, just for, I mean, for like, you know, uh, McAfee virus software. Great stuff. He used to use that as a kid. Fantastic. But uh, just, you know, suckering people in by saying it's a million and then calling everybody stupid for believing him. So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Anyhow, um, this isn't about the prediction of it's going to a million because I don't think it's going to. I'll just be honest with you. I think 250 is the tops and that's going to be a long time. That's just me. I'm a very reserved person. However, what I'd like to see is not what people are saying, but what they were doing. And these two articles go back to back in tandem. That's why I want to bring it. So Fidelity Digital Assets uh, reviewed and validated the stock to flow model, predicts the model, the price of a million, and expects Bitcoin to outperform gold after 2024 because of the stock to flow ratio. And this was interesting about they are predicting that all of the gold is going to be mined by 2035. I had no idea that was a thing. So that's interesting. Also, if you subscribe to the whole thing about what Elon Musk said, where they're going to blast off rockets and mine gold out of asteroids, <laughs> how much could the you know gold really be then? There's a lot of them out there, but what are you going to do? All right, so I'm not going to read the whole article because some of it's kind of boring. But uh, here's the big thing. The stock to flow ratio and, they, and they're just looking at you know 2025 is when they believe that it is going to hit one million dollars look for me i can wait four years i'm good i got nothing else going on i mean i got other businesses but i mean uh, i i have the, the money just sitting there waiting to accumulate that's why i say cryptocurrency as fast as it is it is not a get rich quick scene just dollar cost average in and sit back and wait just kick it what else you got to do but the thing is that it's not just Fidelity. Uh, the asset management firm Grayscale agrees with Fidelity uh, or, the, or their conclusions as shown on the chart below. Uh, so Grayscale and Fidelity pretty much say the same thing. Look, stock to flow ratio, we're pretty much following the, the, the model to a T. We'd like to see it go up and they're going to see, looks like uh, 2021 is a year. I mean, I can see that definitely happening to 100,000. 2022, 2023. I don't agree with it's going to stay flat like this, though. I, I think it's going to go down a little bit, just like it always has, just like it did right here and over here and over here and over here. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be flat. Uh, I think it'll go to I think it could go 100 100K. And then if we hit to 2025, sure, like I said, I could definitely wait. But but the interesting stuff is really in the report. I'm going to link that in the description. But uh, this is a it's a 19 page report. It's fascinating, really. And it just talks about it's the same thing we've been talking about on this channel for forever. And it's just good to see that smart money, especially Fidelity, which I don't know if you realize this, but Fidelity has almost eight trillion assets under management. That's trillion with a T. Now, when I was a kid, I thought a billion was a lot of money, but that's just, you know, paper money these days. Anyhow, this is a nice little quote from uh, Brian Kelly, BKCM. He says, Bitcoin is the most significant innovation in finance since the Medici's invented double entry accounting. There is a great um, documentary on Bitcoin. It was just released, I think it was in May or April 2020. And it gives an account of the Medici's back in the day, how they did the double entry accounting, how it just revolutionized everything. And if they're saying this is bigger than that, hey, I got to agree. But uh, here's the point. Scarcity is the care characteristic cited in reference to a good store of value as it is essential for protecting against the depreciation of real value in the long run. One of Bitcoin's most novel innovations is its unfor unforgeable digital scarcity. There's a caveat there. It's not just about scarcity, it's also about demand. Um, if you have a scarcity of a flip-flop, like, like you're like, hey, I made these purple flip-flops and no one else has them, that's just, you're just scarce in a flip, but there's no demand, who cares? Here is a difference. There is huge demand for Bitcoin, and we see it all over the place. These big corporations, these big entities uh, are getting into the game. And even if you uh, took a look at that uh, interview I did with Alex Maschioli, where you know he is the, the head of uh, Bquant, and he's talking about big, huge players, and all they ask about is Bitcoin. Now, is Bitcoin the only thing that's going to go up? No. Everything else will go up with Bitcoin. That's why I'm always talking about it, because if Bitcoin goes up, you know what else goes up? tomato coin. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like everything in, in, in the whole space goes up. So that's what I'm trying to say.
since Bitcoin scarcity was coded in the protocol when it was created, the unknown consequences of record low interest rates, unprecedented levels of global monetary and fiscal stimulus, also known as quantitative easing, also known as quack economics, also known as money printing, and deglobalization are all adding fuel to the fire of awareness and adoption. And I got to tell you, it is interesting how the uh, happening happened in May when all this craziness was happening. Uh, so that was a big catalyst, I think, for Bitcoin's price going up. The worse the economy does or the worse that everything uh, happens in the world, unfortunately, the more gold and Bitcoin will go up. Just an opinion. And lastly, it says longer term drivers include slow and steady inflation and the great wealth transfer to a millennial demographic that has a, favor a very favorable opinion on digital assets. So I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, scrolling down. This, I always talk about this, about the uh, how early we are and how much money is in the space. So if you're looking at Bitcoin, a whopping $172 billion, which is a lot of money, let's be honest. Uh, not for Jeff Bezos. Uh, he actually is a 200 billionaire. So good for that guy. But uh, Facebook, you know, $684 billion, So Bitcoin share is only 25% of that. Gold, $11 trillion. $11 trillion in gold. That means that that Bitcoin is only 1.6% of that. And if you don't think that Bitcoin is coming for gold's lunch, you are out of your mind. And that is why Schiff, Peter Schiff, is always talking about it. One, I do believe he thinks, I believe that he thinks that Bitcoin sucks. I believe he thinks that Bitcoin is worthless. Uh, but that is all formulated inside his mind because he is such a big gold bug. I get it. And uh, that's it. But I think only time will tell. I happen to believe that he is incorrect. But what do I know? Stock markets, 89 trillion. That's 0.2% of Bitcoin. Global debt, global real estate. And then if you look at the derivatives market, it's like 0.001%. So we got a lot of room to grow. Uh, so you watching this right now, um, I think you're a millionaire already. All right, let's move down. This one by John Pfeiffer of uh, or Pfeffer, Pfeffer Capital. He says, most people in the world don't yet see Bitcoin as digital gold. As soon as people see it in a different way, the price will adjust. And uh, if you know, if you've been on the channel for a while, I always talk about this elevator pitch. And I say, you know, uh, Bitcoin is digital gold. Uh, there's only 21 million, unlike gold, which is, you know, you could mine it for whoever long. And uh, you can send it to anyone, anyone in the world for next to nothing. It used to be cost a nickel. Uh, now it costs almost $12,000. Why I heavily invest into it. So that's my little elevator pitch. But there is one one thing. I was playing volleyball this weekend and somebody asked me, said, hey, I have a question, which is what is Bitcoin? Why Bitcoin? I don't get it. And I started off with this question. What gives, and I, and I, I took a $20 bill out of my pocket. I said, what gives this value? And she's like, I don't know. I go, what gives it value is it's backed by the US government. That's it. That's it. And it's not even worth that much because, you know, dollar goes down. I said, so what gives gold value? She's like, I don't know. I said, well, we give it value. I mean, we said thousands of years ago, gold is worth this, X amount of this, and that whatever else. Just like seashells worth something, just like salt was worth something, just like buckskin's worth something, and just like this dollar is worth something. It's because we gave it that value, and then, of course, the government uh, backed it up. And then I went into everything. So I, I think it's good to kind of frame it that way. If you ever want to talk to people about it, just say, what gives a dollar value? Well, it's the government. What gives gold value? Well, it's this and that. And if they ever say, well, you know, gold has intrinsic value, I can make a watch out of it. Like, really? That is true. But when people are buying gold, they're not buying gold so they can turn it into a, a ring or a watch or whatever else. They're buying gold as a speculative asset and as a store of value, which is the same thing as Bitcoin. That's what I always say. And then if I if I really want to go deep, I'll say, well, what's the intrinsic value of Google? You can't touch it. You can't see it. Google's Google. But it sure is valuable. Anyhow, moving far, moving down, down, down. Um, and this was the uh, the stock to flow ratio. And this little piece here, I'm going to zoom in. A Goldman Sachs report from 2015 estimated that the last of gold from known reserves of mine by 2035, excuse me, 2035, and the last of platinum will be mined by 2055. The last Bitcoin will be mined around 2040. So I got to tell you, that's, I think, where they're kind of coming from as far as that stock to flow ratio and their million dollar prediction. So, okay, million dollars. I mean, I'm not going to be upset if it makes, makes that. I mean, if it hits it, great. If it doesn't, I'll take 250. And then lastly, I just want to talk about this because this is kind of important. If So when people are talking about the U.S. dollar, and how you know great it is. Here's the purchasing power of the US dollar. And you can Google this and it's all the same thing. So that's why, like back in the day, you know, a nickel will buy a loaf of bread, right? I mean your grandfather said the same thing, right? However, as time has gone on and now we're this isn't just in 2018, 2020. What do you think the purchasing power of the dollar is right now? How many of you have gone into a restaurant 
and uh, seen the prices go up? How many of you gone to your grocery store to the prices go up? How many have gone anywhere and see the prices go up? Well, there is a there is a reason for that. I think it's the weakening of the U.S. dollar. But uh, just uh, just a thought. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but uh, again. I'm not real big on the, the million dollar theory as far as Bitcoin, but what I am big on is when we start to talk about these high entities, this smart money and what they are doing behind the scenes.